welcome to another video. So, Aider is something that I really like. I mean, it works great, and I really like it. I like it better than Klein, even because Aider is a much more economical way to make changes. And it is much closer to the composer feature of Cursor. And that's why I recommend it so much. But, there has been an issue with Aider. And the issue is that you need to use it via a terminal. I mean, it isn't a big problem for me because I use NeoVim a lot, and I actually like its terminal interface better. But people who use something like Cursor just want a simple thing inside their editor that's easy to use and doesn't require them to know how to use the terminal and navigate through it. I think that we have something that just does that for us now with a great-looking interface. This one is called Aider Composer. Now, what's Aider Composer, you may ask? Well, Aider Composer is based on Aider and allows you to control Aider from a graphical interface inside VS Code. The interface is very similar to Composer from Cursor, and that's why it's named Aider Composer. It is open source as well and gives you the option to edit things or ask almost anything that you can do with Aider. You can basically think of this like an abstraction layer over Aider that makes it much more accessible. I had been thinking that maybe someone could do it, and finally, someone did it. Although it still has a little bit of limitations due to the fact that it is an abstraction, it doesn't support multiple workspaces, Git repository features, linting features, and testing features. Voice and in-chat commands are also not yet usable, but I think that they should get supported soon as well, because this is a relatively new project. It also allows you to easily add and remove files and toggle between read-only and editable modes with just a click. It has all the chat modes supported, so if you prefer some other edit format, then you can use it if you want. You also get the option to review code changes before applying them, which is great because, although Aider gives you the option to approve stuff before applying, checking them on a terminal is a pretty hard process. So, this should be good in that area. It also saves the chat history sessions, which should also be great. You can also reference files like Cursor Composer in this as well. One thing that I like about this is that it is not a fork of Aider. Instead, it just uses the Aider installed on your computer as a back end and uses that instead of putting it in a package and then making its own changes to it. I think that this is a great approach for sure. But that's enough talk. Let's set it up and see how it works. Setting it up is a little challenging. But don't worry. I'll tell you how to set it up. So first of all, in VS Code, go to Extensions. Now, here search for Aider Composer and get it installed. Now, once it has been installed, you'll see that you don't see the extension anywhere. Well, that's because you'll need to set up the Python path for the extension to use. To do that, just go to VS Code Settings. Here, search for Composer and you'll see this setting. Here, we'll need to set the Python executable path, and we'll also need to make sure that Aider is installed on that instance. So, getting the path of your Python installation can be challenging because sometimes you have a different version that only supports the Python 3 command and stuff like that. To do that, what you can do is use a virtual environment instead as that is much easier to reproduce. So first of all, just get Python installed as you do. Once done, create a new folder, and in that, just run this command, and this will create a new virtual environment for you. Once done, you'll need to get into the shell of that virtual environment by running this command. Once done, you'll need to install Aider and Flask. To do that, just run this command, and this will take a bit and get the packages installed. Next, just run the pwd command, 
and you'll get the path of the current directory. Now, copy this and go back to VS Code and put this path inside the VS Code settings and add nvbin at the last. Once that's done, you can start using it. But it is actually much easier for Windows people, and you probably don't need to do this much. So, for Windows people, just get Python 3.10 installed. And while installing, make sure that you hit the Add to Path option. Once done, just go to the terminal and run this pip install adder flask command like this. This will take a bit and get it installed. Once done, just go and search for environment variables. Here, you'll find this option. Just click and open it up. Now, here select this environment variables option. Now, select path and copy this Python path written here. Then, just go to VS Code, and in the settings, enter the path you copied, and then just remove this part from it. Once done, you can start using it. Now, you'll see the Ader icon on the sidebar. Just open it up. Now, you'll need to configure the provider you want to use, like OpenAI, Anthropic, or an OpenAI-compatible API or anything. So, just get it configured with the model name and everything. I have been using the GLHF free API. So, I just enter the GLHF API base URL along with the model name and API. You can see my proper video on how you can configure it. So, just get it configured as you want. Now, you can start using it. First of all, you have the settings option here where you can change the providers if you want. Anyway, Apart from that, you have the history option where the history of chats will be shown similar to Klein, and you also have the add option, which will make a new thread. Now, this is the major play area. Here, you can enter the prompt, and if you look down, then you can see that you have the ask and code option. The ask mode will make it only read files and not write anything, while code will write files and edit files as well. You can also add exact files to edit, like Composer, if you just want it to work on specific files. If you don't add anything, then it will just select whatever file to edit based on the prompt. Anyway, if we send a prompt here in the Ask mode, then you can see that this works pretty well, and we also get the response here. But let's try to code something with it. Just to test, let's go in the code mode here, and let's ask it to make a Minesweeper game using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay, it's doing that now. You'll start seeing the code that it is generating as well, just like you'd see in Ader. Once the code has been generated, you'll then get the files opened that have been edited or generated by Ader, and you'll need to approve or reject it by using the tick icon at the top. Let's hit the tick, and once you do that, the files will be created, and it's done, just like Ader. So, it works pretty well, and you can just run it and see it work, which is pretty great to be honest, and works just like Ader, but in a much more intuitive environment. I also tried it out in a bigger project, like the Panels app, and it works just like Ader in bigger applications as well. Because, well, it technically is just Ader. So, this works really well for sure. Plus, it's pretty new right now. And I hope that the project gets improved, because I think that this will make Ader much more accessible. I think that it's already better than Cursor's Composer, to be honest. Because it just has the great technology of Ader. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the Super Thanks option below. Or you can also consider becoming a member by clicking the Join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.